Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Haydn's Symphony Number no. 100 in G Major, which is nicknamed the Military Symphony. And I'd like to go through each of the four movements, exploring how this work is put together. I do believe that having some understanding of structure in classical music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. Now, Haydn um, wrote 12 London symphonies. Um, and they were composed for these trips uh, to London, which was um, organised by the impresario Johann Peter Salomon. And um, this symphony is from the second trip, which took place uh, in 1794. The symphony received its premiere on the 31st of March, which is actually Haydn's 62nd birthday, in the Hanover Concert Halls in London. And uh, the symphony became a huge success. I mean, Haydn was a, a big success generally in, in England, but um, this was one of the more, most popular of the London symphonies. And it was uh, repeated a few times uh, that year in London. And indeed, um, it got its nickname very early on, the Military Symphony. Why is this symphony called the Military Symphony? Well, Haydn includes some, um, you might call Turkish, in inverted commas, percussion, which really in um, Haydn's day would mean um, cymbals, um, a triangle and a bass drum. And so this symphony is easily distinguishable from the other symphonies around it by these uh, colourful effects. Um, and added to that, there's some rather dramatic moments uh, which might suggest um, the army, particularly in the second movement um, with these uh, trumpet fanfares. The Morning Chronicle uh, reported this. Another new symphony by Haydn was performed for the second time and the middle movement was again received with absolute shouts of applause. That's the one with the added military effects and the Turkish percussion. Encore, encore, encore resounded from every seat. The ladies themselves could not forbear. It is the advancing to battle and the march of men, the sounding of the charge, the clash of arms, the groans of the wounded, and what may well be called the hellish roar of war increased to a climax of horrid sublimity which, if others can conceive, he alone can execute. At least he alone hitherto has affected these wonders. So this symphony had uh, really captured the imagination of the listeners within the musical elite of London in the 1790s. Now, like many of other Haydn symphonies, uh, the first movement has a slow introduction. Um, not a kind of a grand introduction as some of the others are. It's a bit gentler, this one. Uh, go something like this. with that dotted rhythm dum da dum dum in the seconds and violas we perhaps have a slightly militaristic uh, tone um, as, a, as you'd expect from Haydn there's a couple of interesting uh, harmonic shifts in this introduction and finally we get to the first subject which is this delightful melody heard on the wind it's kind of the, this rather hornpipe feel to it um, with the uh, the flute and two oboes, and the melody's like this. Um, and then no sooner as that is stated, uh, we're into the transition straight away. It's a rather exciting, dramatic transition based on that first subject idea, which then takes us to the dominant. And as is quite often the case with Haydn, the second subject doesn't begin with a new theme. It's the first theme again, uh, but in the dominant this time. Um, what you might call a monothematic um, exposition. Um, but actually, 
after a brief um, colouring of the music in the minor mode, Haydn does bring us a brand new tune, uh, which is this delightful uh, melody, now in D major of course, which goes like this. And then that takes us to a brief uh, codetta and then uh, the exposition might be repeated. Now we have one of Haydn's surprises. Um, the beginning of the development we have um, two bars of silence, actually slightly more than two bars of silence if you count the very last bar of the exposition as well. And we're plunged from, um, well we ended up in um, D major at the end of the exposition and now we're in B flat major. Quite a lurch there, uh, really effective. There's a sudden silence and then we hear that uh, new idea in the second subject back but in B flat major. Um, really great entry into development. Um, and then, as you'd expect with Haydn, we have uh, many uh, turns through various keys throughout this development. We have, and um, eventually we go back to that delightful um, first subject. Um, and this is an interesting recapitulation because remember, it, the exposition was largely monothematic. We just had one uh, melody. Um, well, the first subject is repeated in the dominant key. Well, here we have the uh, first subject again, back in the home key. And so on. And then the transition's taken out and we hear the first subject again, but in our minds, we've got to kind of label this as the second subject. Because in the exposition, it's here that uh, we hear this in the dominant. So although we're hearing the same tune again, in terms of uh, analysis, it makes sense to call this the second subject in the recapitulation. So we hear the same tune again in the tonic, uh, this time with those added bits we hear in the second subject group. And then we have that uh, lovely new melody in the second subject group again, this time in the home key. so on. And then another Haydn surprise, we lurched from G major into E flat major into the coda, a rather dramatic uh, key change and uh, it's a rather rousing coda to end this marvellous movement. The second, the second movement is where the symphony gets its nickname, the military from, and essentially it's in ternary form. So we have an A section which is repeated with certain additions, particularly in this movement, near the end and in the middle, we, uh, the middle of this musical sandwich we have um, a, a minor uh, passage. Uh, it begins like this with this, uh, this tune which by the way apparently was originally it was planned to be part of a uh, a concerto uh, for the Lyra Organizata which apparently was this hurdy-gurdy kind of instrument. So here is Haydn is recycling from a previous work and the, the melody goes like this for the A section. rather stately, noble tune. That's repeated a few times with the corresponding second phrase with that idea. Um, rather richly scored, particularly in the winds. And then we have uh, the, the contrasting B section, which uh, is in the minor mode. This movement starts in C major and we go into C minor with um, a version of the tune we've heard already. And 
And it's here in this middle section that we hear this rather exciting and novel um, percussion. We hear the triangle, the cymbals and the bass drum. It, and it really makes this movement stand out in my opinion. Um, eventually we come back to the original tune back in the major, C major again. This time the orchestration is varied and indeed we have the return of the Turkish percussion. Then we have a coda and here this must have been the moment when that uh, reporter for the Morning Chronicle in London was talking about here in the armies etc. We hear this classic fanfare on uh, trumpets in C. And then we hear this timpani roll. Uh, very exciting, very dramatic. Then we have this massive crashing chord, uh, which then dies down. And uh, it's a very exciting end um, to this movement, a rather wonderful coda. The third movement is a, a minuet, as you'd expect in a Haydn symphony. And it's a fairly jolly standard Haydn minuet. Uh, we have this idea. Then we have uh, this new idea in the A section. And then eventually we go back to the uh, opening tune. So that A section, uh, as with many um, minuets, is kind of uh, in itself is a small ternary form. Now we come to the trio, the middle section, uh, which is this idea. Rather witty. And then we have um, the orchestra kind of builds up ahead of steam. We have this almost monophonic uh, repetition of this rhythm. And then it ends. Um, we go back to the first idea of the trio and then we have the A section again. So we have the ternary ABA scheme as you'd expect. The finale is uh, a witty piece like many of Haydn's finales are. Uh, it's in sonata form again like the first movement um, but the theme itself has got a rather rondo like character to it. We're in 6-8 and the first subject goes like this. Already you notice Haydn going into fairly off the road keys. Uh, but essentially we're back in the tonic key G major and uh, that first subject certainly sticks in the mind. Then we have um, a rather lengthy transition and then we're into the second subject which goes like this in D major in the, in the dominant. So that carries on and we have a development and this development is rather far ranging. It's um, Haydn touches many moods uh, in this development actually. Some even approaching rather, some even rather dark in this jolly piece. Um, based on that first idea largely but the second subject does make an appearance in a development. We go back to the first subject 
we have the uh, transition and uh, we're in the uh, second subject and when we have the return to the second subject guess what right at the end of the symphony our friends the Turkish percussion come back and here we go we got the the bass drum the the cymbals the triangle all blaring away um, all the way through to the end of this uh, great symphony uh, and indeed they carry on through into the coda as well uh, based on those triplets from the first subject. Haydn's music can even easily be overlooked and I think um, although everyone regards him as a great composer you don't often really hear people enthusing about him these days certainly Beethoven certainly Mozart but Haydn a bit rarer and I think that's a real shame I mean these symphonies are so wonderful and they're definitely worth getting to know. I saw this symphony once during the proms um, in the Royal Albert Hall in London and um, the late and great Maris Janssens was conducting the Royal Concertsbau Orchestra and it was really wonderful they had they had the Turkish percussion guys that came on and they they made a real fuss of them the guy playing the cymbals had this this kind of it looked like a tree he was kind of uh, kind of using on the bee. It was really quite uh, theatrical. And um, and it was really wonderful. At the end of the, 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 the performance, uh, the uh, percussionists um, kind of marched off in time like this, played their instruments after the symphony had finished and Marish Janssen's kind of uh, strolled off after them in time as well. Uh, it's a very witty moment uh, and a very, in a very memorable concert actually. And uh, it's an example of a conductor and an orchestra really entering into the, the wit and humour of Haydn's music. Thank you for watching. If you have any further suggestions for pieces you'd like me to look at, please put them in the comments below. Bye.